and welcome to Getting Your Money's Worth, the show that focuses on value. I'm Judith West, and our guest today is Henry Stern, director of NewYorkCivic.org, but, but mainly a icon in New York City politics. You've been a, thanks for being on the show, Henry. You've been around a long time in the political world, right? Oh, yes. How many mayors did you serve? Have, have, uh, have you seen? Well, seven mayors in one way or another. A couple of them fired me. Right. But, uh, well, that may have been a distinction. <laughs> well, whatever they did, I like to say that I've been hired, I've been promoted, I've been fired, I've been declared unconstitutional at different points in my career. I've had every possible up, I've been elected and re-elected and abolished. But the nice part is it was all in the same pension plan. <laughs> Good for you. One thing you haven't been, though, like uh, you haven't been appointed. Well, I was appointed you, but, but, parks but, commissioner. Yeah, but not, yeah, but, right. but not to a political office that we represent. That's, well, maybe you have. I guess it I have. Be. I was a state chairman of the right. Liberal Party right. for four years. Right. Uh, but speaking about this, all the job you've had, yes. appointed and elected, not appointed elected. Uh, were you in Washington for the inauguration? No. No. It no. was too cold right. and too far. Right. And... Uh, you know, I don't want to sound snobbish, but you're not going right. to no, struggle for space with a right. million people yeah. anymore. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and anyway, you, 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 we, I think we all got the thrill of it, whether we were there or not. Oh, the, the media, it's terrific. You get a better than front better row people, seats. Yeah, exactly. Uh, our president exhorted Americans, ask us to stand up, dust ourselves off, and contribute and help to make America um, strong again. You've been doing that kind of stuff all your life. Yeah, I think he was inspiring. I think he's good. I, I mean, I was very wary about Obama, to tell the truth, before he was elected, because I didn't know what he really felt. I knew what he was saying in the campaign, right. but I know that politicians say what they think will help them get elected, right. and it doesn't mean they, they, they're sincere about it. Right. But. Uh, Everything he's done since his election has been very comforting yes. to us, uh, what we might call moderates. Okay, including even, yeah, uh, including uh, the selection of his cabinet. Excellent. He, the, the team of rivals concept, uh, putting in Hillary Clinton, the Secretary of State, is a great idea. Right. And keeping uh, Secretary Gates. Yes. Right. It's also uh, very good. And, and, and dropping Secretary Richardson as soon when he got into trouble right. with that fraud in New Mexico. He, so he, he, didn't, he, didn't let, he didn't let it drag on and, right. and ruin his, uh, blemish his, his record. Right. The idea, he has asked me to withdraw his name. Yes, That's and, the way. and he also did. But you know something, too, and I thought it was very nice and very dignified the way uh, President Obama and Mrs. Obama walked former President Bush and Mrs. Bush to the helicopter. Right. The first time that had happened, I'm told, really? and stood right there on the tarmac and didn't turn their back till the helicopter took off. That's very nice. I thought that was a very what dignified a, and very civilized. He wanted to make sure he took off. Well, maybe, but still, but it was respectful. He didn't turn his back. You're right about that, too, probably. <laughs> That's why I'm not a politician. I don't always see all the nuances. Just, yeah. just yeah. kidding about but, that. But right. he was, and he also acknowledged uh, Bush in his speech. Yes. Which was when Spitzer did. Spitzer was terrible. When he was inaugurated as governor uh, years ago, he said pretty negative things about the Pataki administration right, right in the presence of Governor Pataki. Yeah. Which was I suppose, yeah. I, uh, well, you know, he had, he, he, had, he, he, he forged his own record. But we have, you, we've talked, you, you've talked about on this show about how smart politicians, and you mentioned Spitzer, do dumb things. Oh, yeah. Do and, they? We, and I ask you about it all the time. And we have two, we kind of, we have two examples right now. Um, Caroline, we're in New York State. We've been absorbed yes. with this Caroline Kennedy. So I have I. I've written right. about it three times. I know you, you have. Know. And you know, and you know, yes. she <laughs> couldn't, there. right. She, ah, she, there was yeah. even, there was even some confusion, you know, yes. with her um, taking herself out of the race. And not, not, the worst thing was not voting in half yeah, the election. Yeah, right. So how, gonna... how do you explain something like that, Henry? It, 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 and then we have this, uh, uh, you know, seem like a very credible um, uh, Treasury Secretary, Tim Geithner, who is going to head the IRS, and he's some confusion about his own taxes. How do we as Americans understand There's that? There's no confusion. He uh, what is didn't it? pay it, and he thought it was, 
Well, it's the question. Are you trying of, to get by with not paying thirty-three thousand dollars? It doesn't sound likely. Well, it's the IMF. It's the international. He was working right. for an international organization, right. and the question is whether the employees of that international organization have to pay United States income taxes and other taxes. The answer is they do. Yeah, and I'm but sure shouldn't he, he know that? Yes, he should have known it. But you know, people. Uh, when it's there, and the fact is that when they corrected, you know, when they audited his returns for 03 and 04 and made him pay up, he didn't tell them that he had done the same thing in 01 and 02 and didn't pay up for that Why? until they, he was about to be nominated. I, I, well, it's the way, you know, this, and they have uh, nannies who are illegal aliens or undocumented, so they don't pay tax. It? Look, two, two women were knocked out for attorney general. Yeah. And they were probably, interesting, they were probably better. Uh, Zoe Baird and Kimba Wood were smart and well qualified and then when they were both knocked out because they didn't, the nannies, he goes to uh, Zoe, not Zoe, he goes into Janet Reno, right. you know, would never have a nanny because you never have a kid. Right. And, and not of the same caliber. No, no, not at yeah. all. So again, I'm going to ask you, because uh, Anita Kelly Kennedy, she performed uh, very poorly. Uh, I mean, this is a woman who has uh, the pedigree background, and she was stuck for an answer up in uh, upstate. I'm going to ask you again. That's why I have you on the show. What is the reason that these smart people seem to do these really dumb things? Well, in this case, it's different. Some people, I mean, uh, I'm talking about Sarah Palin. And the she well, that's another story. But uh, what happens, first of all, she, she has no in-depth knowledge of public affairs. Caroline like, Kennedy. Caroline Kennedy. Like you asked me, if I were nominated for uh, head of the medical association, a secretary of health, right. and I were asked questions, I couldn't answer those questions. They're out of my field. Uh, it's the same thing here. She has an average citizen's interest in these matters. So why did she put herself forward? Well, Uncle Teddy is part of it. Mm -hmm. And you know, people come to you and you say, you are the only one, you can be the senator. Keep the Kennedy name the going. name and right, and right. now that your uncle is sick. And her, her whole family is dead. I mean, not only her father, her mother, her brother. Right. She's right. alone in that generation. Right. And uh, she has always been a sympathetic and popular figure. But they used her name for the Board of Education to try to raise money. Right. And they did. They raise money. Yeah, when people who want to ingratiate right. themselves with her right. give money right. so she gets credit yeah. for, for that. But she quit that too. She didn't want to do that more than an hour or two a day. Exactly. But you know, um, how is it that uh, in a, uh, we're in New York State, shouldn't, shouldn't we have a chance to elect who's going to represent well, us? We, What's your point of view? Well, we will in 2010. And but, I suggested in, in writing that Governor Patterson appoint a placeholder an elder statesman, someone like Ed Koch, or Mario Cuomo, if his son weren't running, someone who is highly respected in the state, who would be a good companion for Senator Schumer, and would leave it to the people to pick the senator in 2010. Wow. Now instead, Patterson wants to give the new senator a running start. Yeah. So he wants to choose the senator, not only for two years, but for, but the for next 20 four. years. Right, exactly. And that's one yeah. thing which really bothered me about Caroline Kennedy. Yeah. Okay, give her an honorary uh, mention for her, you know, because of her tragic family. But don't saddle us with her. For, for 25 years yeah, until right. she... Yeah. She's but, not, she's not going to be appointed Secretary of State. <laughs> no, no. Uh, uh, getting, going back to, this, to the Washington scene that you know yeah. that you can speak of, um, he's, uh, President Obama has promised he was elected on a platform of change. Yes. Do you think the system... It's going to allow change. This is very good. This is an excellent question. Is it possible? Yeah. Well, for one thing, it's, it's good to have an, a very intelligent and articulate president. Yes. Instead of one who had speaking difficulties. Right. And, uh, for example, uh, they, they explored, they, they finally got through freedom of information. They got the grades right. of Kerry and Bush at Yale. And they found out that... Uh, Bush had a 77 average. He was a C-plus student. But Kerry had a 76 average. Huh. He was even uh, worse. He was even a lower C-plus. Yes, but, but right. But, but all through the years, you read about how dumb Bush was. 
You never heard about how dumb Kerry no, was. No, we had a chance to see for ourselves, though. Yes, <laughs> when he was nominated. Right, right, but we, until right, then, right. nobody knew. Nobody right, knew Kerry. Right, right. He was the reason he got the nomination is because he wasn't Howard Dean. Exactly. He, but let's go back to this change. Is it possible? Can we expect, or is it, is it or is a system so insulated? We can expect a, a good president will do somewhat better, but it really needs the nation as a whole. There's a fellow who's written a good book just now, Phil Howard, who's written Life Without Lawyers, oh. and I recommend him to you right. as a guest. I will. Because right. he, is, he is really shows the American people have to have a different attitude. He thinks this country is plagued by litigation. Everybody sues at the drop of a hat. Yes, right. The result is everyone's afraid to do anything. Right. Because a, a doctor won't stop to help a uh, no, no. dying patient in the street. Yeah. My own lawyer says that pa paper will not reject ink. Paper will not reject ink. Anybody can sue for every, anything. Right. 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 That's right. very. It's a very good line. I right. haven't heard it. I know you like good lines. Uh, but yet we are imbued with this sense of hope and change. Is it possible for, for the two sides of the aisle to... Uh, to get away from their old uh, hack agendas and cooperate? Well, Obama is doing his best to do that. He's working with John McCain very closely. And he honored him at a dinner? Yes. You know, it was funny because the papers took a crack at it. I think it was um, Maureen, no, it wasn't yeah. Maureen Dowd. Right. She's the toughest. There's another woman, Gail, Gail Collins, Collins. At the Times. And she referred to uh, John McCain as uh, President Obama's new BFF. <laughs> Best friend, For best, best friend former forever. Friend. Oh, best, best friend, friend forever. Oh, okay. That's what kids. So what? That's what kids say. Yeah. Yeah. So it was so funny. You know the media, and we don't want to do that. We only have a minute. The media plays a big part because they don't. If they if they don't stir up controversy, stir the pot, of they have nothing to write about. You're absolutely right. The media foments. They, they, for example, they have a column on the, what the Mrs. Obama wore, the kids. Right. And they have somebody writing how terrible and how ugly it was. Right. Exactly. So somebody else can write how nice it how is. How it is right. But they find any little they find any little thing to write about. But the reality is, you've been in politics uh, I, you've, uh, for all my life for fifty life. years. You, uh, you did live. We we have oh, we are we are with, we're witnessing a historic moment. Right. And, and I like my, I like uh, President Obama. I do and too. And I'll tell you what I've done today in, in an article which I get out. Uh, he adopted all these ethical standards. I want uh, Governor Patterson and Mayor Bloomberg to adopt the same standards for New York right State and City. And how about the, the pay freeze? That's not a bad idea either. I talked about that. Did you, uh, are so. you recommending that too, Henry? Well, for a while, until you get to know how much people are worth. Exactly. In any way, I said we're, the feds don't pay, shouldn't pay retention bonuses. Right. In any way, we're exactly, and I mean, you know, and we're in, we're in tough times here. Every American has to tighten his belt. Shouldn't that not include politicians? Sure. But right. the politicians, especially in Albany, yeah. are incredibly greedy. Right. They used to be in positions so we need term limits, for example. And I thought that uh, what Mayor Bloomberg is doing in repealing I the know, terms, you, were, you have strong feelings against Strong feeling that that is wrong. Uh, they're doing the same thing in these African countries, where the first thing the dictator does is he tries to repeal terms. Right, right. Yeah. Not to say that in, in these troubled times, um, someone who is as due diligence in, with finances as Mayor Bloomberg is, is in a comfort level right now in New York City, too. Yes, yeah. but... Uh, you, it should have been up to the voters. Well, let's put it this way. He didn't stop the recession. No. He didn't do anything to prevent it. He, he saved money. He said he has prepared. He's fiscally, right. he's fiscally prudent. Right. He's much more prudent in the state and the federal government. Right. I'm going to say, I'm sure you agree, they're much better than Albany. Yes, no question but about that's it. But that's, kind of like that's kind of like the old joke, Henry. How's your mother-in-law compared to what? Right. Yeah, exactly. right. being yes. a dead right. horse. Yes. No, he's, he's, he's good. It's, it's very interesting when someone is mixed. He has very wonderful aspects, Mayor Bloomberg does. Yes. But there are some things he does. Well, just as we've talked about for the personality of politicians, right? Yes, right, right. yes. Okay, we are out of time. It's a pleasure. Will you come back? I sure. always feel honored when I have you because uh, you speak from uh, you speak from the battlefield. You speak yeah. from experience. Well, I'm right in there, mucking it up with the guys. Uh, it's also easy because my office is only two blocks away Good. from your studio. Okay, thanks for being on the show. I'm Judith West. You're watching Getting Your Money's Worth and. Uh, our friend, uh, Mr. Stern, just gave us our money's worth. Starquest. Thanks for watching.
Star Quest, right? Well, we, we, we have it. We have it on the. We have it on the uh, on the screen. Okay. Thanks. Right, have a Star Quest at NewYorkCivic.org. Thank you. Thanks, Henry. Take care, Judy. Thank <laughs> you.